first, I got to congratulate you. You had an idea, you put it together, you seen it to its completion. Very few independent films actually get finished, but not only did the last Kumite get finished, it turned out great and it got real commercial distribution. So that is a rare feat, especially for a first time producer. So congratulations, man. Well, uh, thank you very much, but I would like to, to congratulate the retro community because this was, and this is why I'm also so super proud uh, of the entire project. This was a fan thing from the beginning to the end, which means you had fans who did the production. You had fans who chipped in with money. You had fans who chipped in with uh, whatever it took. And we basically, yeah, came together as one from the entire world. You had fans from Australia, from the US, from Germany, from even from Asia. So this was a, a team effort. And I'm so proud that in today's world that, one of the one of the few things that actually got better nowadays you have the chance to unite and actually make a project uh together or do a project together definitely and it, it, it's such like a strong community it's actually my whole youtube channel is based on this fame community about the 80s 90s action martial arts films so i was so proud and honored to be a part of this project man especially when i got out there to germany which was my actually the first time i've ever been in europe and working on a movie, the type of movie that I grew up watching was like such a thrill. It felt surreal in many ways because the cast that you assembled, like these were people I grew up watching that I admired that were inspired me. And then I'm like not only meeting them for the first time, but working with them. So it's such a surreal experience. I'm sure it was the same for you meeting them all. Well, yes. Um, the crazy. I mean, the, the, the thing was that I was with, uh, in touch with those guys for quite some time before the shoot starts. So. Um, before the shoot started. So I already started to build a relationship with these guys, but obviously it was still nice actually seeing them in, in real life and actually uh, hanging out with them, spending time with them. And yes, that was such an honor, such a privilege and such a nice um, opportunity. I mean, some of the guys I consider friends now because we're, we're talking um, every week exchanging thoughts and not only about the music uh, music uh, the movie also personal stuff and uh, whatever and that is also what I really cherish about those guys that they are really down to earth you can really see that they have have had their their um their Hollywood experience and and all those things and they are so cool and and relaxed and just so so as I said down to earth it's that's what stars should be like oh 100 everybody was so nice respectful there were no egos on set you know um except yeah, for yours but thing is, well yeah of course <laughs> no but the funny thing is like uh you know because of course i i keep in contact with a lot of people i interview and then meet and uh work with and it was it was really cool that for example you know i work with billy blanks in this film like we all did on this film and then in real life, you know, I did some training with them for a real fight that I actually did last week in Atlantic City. He's, he's a good, amazing boxing coach. Obviously, people know him as a Taibo guy, big base, but people do not know his history as a boxer. Golden Gloves champion would have gone pro. Actually, I asked him why he didn't because he's so skilled. Very interesting story behind that. I'll get a full interview with Billy next week. We'll talk about we'll talk about the last Kumite. We'll talk about his real fight history because people don't really know. Um, you know, they just think he's a Taibo guy, but he's so much more than that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he has a long career in martial arts. Yeah, uh, and yes, two two thousand kids. He's the Taibo guy, but yeah, that guy was legit, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. And I'll always know him as the uh, the martial art movie guy because when I was going to the video yes. store back in the day, you know, you see things like back in action, they would have the big poster in the video store, TC 2000, movies like that. I ran it up. So I always knew him as the martial art movie guy. Me too. People prior to that would know him as actually the competitive martial arts. Uh, and I'm going to get that whole story in the future. But then, like you said, 2000 and up, he's he's the Taibo aerobic guy. Yeah. Um, can you tell us, I know you talked about this before, but the the, the idea that specifically got in your head and set out where you set out and said hey look i gotta make a like an 80s style martial arts film basically yeah well that 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 was uh matthias Hus. um i mean back back in the days back in the days like two two and a half years ago i, I basically had the same show that you have uh, also interviewing my heroes from um from my childhood 
And talking to Matthias, the interview stopped after like 45 minutes and we kept on talking for like an hour, talking about how much we miss those movies and why nobody is making those kind of movies. And and yeah, he basically talked me into producing one. And I mean, I said it countless times. I was super naive. I thought, okay, I can, pu I can pull it off. Sure. Not realizing what that actually meant. And before I knew it, I basically had people on Kickstarter who supported the vision and then there was no turning back. And it was a tough ride, man. I, in all seriousness, um, now, obviously, I'm very proud of the accomplishment, and I'm very, very happy that so many people, not only the fans chipped in, but also all the great people um, on my team that, that supported uh, the great people on the crew, um, my producer um, um, buddy, uh, Wayne Grace. And there were so many people who made this become a re reality. But in, in also in reality, this was probably the toughest thing I ever had to do in life. And um, there were so many struggles which people probably don't realize because now obviously when you are a film consumer, you, you know that, that yeah, film industry is not, uh, not easy. Otherwise everybody would do it. But when you are really in the position where you have basically no budget and you still have to pull up, uh, pull off a decent film, um, it was super tough. And not only the, the, the raising the money part, but, but dealing with everyday issues, it really, uh, really, really was, not easy, man. Not easy. So I'm really, really happy that the movie is now done and that that um that it's finally getting sold. I mean, we're I don't know if you know. I, I think you know, but we we hit number one on the action charts on Amazon in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. We hit number three in Blu-ray sales overall in these countries and and in pre-sales. And um, believe me, it, it's just a relief now that that this is done. But now again, now I have to do all the promotion. I have to do uh, interview after interview after interview, talking to newspapers, talking to YouTube channels, talking to TV stations, um, answering fan mails and everything. I have to do everything so that that the um, that people actually see the film. You know, there's there, it's one part a part making a movie, but you also want people to see it. Yeah, of course, and so of course. Yeah, and and you're doing a great job, man, uh, getting it out there. You know. Uh, rallying everybody behind you to get the word out. I'm happy to get the word out, man, because I'm proud of the film, and it's something that I know a lot of people miss, which is why you, you know, you you were the guy that said, you know what, we got to recreate this, and you did a great job, man. Uh, you know, funny enough, I know there were like different Kickstarter incentives, and one of the guys that contributed uh, to partially fund some of the film actually is a guy that I've known and had talked to. And he recently got one of the costumes from the film. And coincidentally enough, it was my robe that I wore in the movie. <laughs> so I could, Justin? He said, the, yeah, yeah, Justin Harvey, who yes. also does podcasts similar to this. He interviewed, you know, Frank Dukes, a lot of guys from Bloodsport. Oh, and, that I did not know. I just yeah. know that he's a very nice guy. That's all that I know so far. Yeah. And it was funny. He ended up with my robe. I was like, oh, it's very interesting. Very cool, man. <laughs> but um, All right. Well, it's a small world after all. Very. Uh, yeah. What would you say was, I know you, you had a lot of challenges uh, you talked about. Uh, what, what, what do you think your biggest challenge or obstacle was when creating the film? I think I can't narrow it down to, to just one, but just to look, if, 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 if you guys out there are still listening, then I guess you want to he hear some behind the scenes stuff. So um, I won't, I won't uh, give away everything because some things I rather keep to myself, but um one personal issue for me was um, now look because of the fact that we did not have that much money, putting together a movie is super tough. Which means uh, whenever something goes wrong and you don't have the money to correct it, it's already a super um, a super tough situation. Now the first thing that really was a big problem for me was that we had uh, an Australian distributor who um, signed a contract for $100,000 and they did not pay. And they were supposed to pay like three months prior to the shoot, money that we needed for pre-production, they did not pay. Um, so I had to come up with a solution, how to get $100,000 uh, just like that. So I had to uh, dig into my personal life savings and um, yeah, use that money so I could pay people. Yeah. Um, then another thing and that, that for me personally was the toughest thing. Um, I mean, you know, that my mother passed away a month prior to the shoot and, um, 
I basically had like two months prior to the shoot, I visited her, visited her uh, every single day in the hospital while I still had to do a lot for pre-production and time was running, time was running. And um, so I had to deal with um, visiting my mother, still hoping that she would survive. And then on the other hand, um, yeah, making sure that the movie still goes because, yeah, a lot of pressure is uh, being put on my shoulders. If I don't function, the whole movie will not work. So uh, and then, yeah, when she passed away, she passed away very early. Uh, she was only 63. Um, obviously, I was devastated and still I could not even have time to myself and moan. Um, I still had to keep on working. And that that mentally really, really killed me. Like I tried to not make a big deal out of it and keep doing that. But if I'm honest to myself, this was really, really tough for me. Then during the shoot, because I was mentally not healed yet, um, I could not really enjoy the shoot because a too much, uh, super much pressure, getting everything to work, then still dealing mentally um, with the situation with my mother. Then um, when things go going wrong, finding solutions, uh, which was super tough. Um, yeah, then in the post production, a lot, uh, a lot of uh, stuff happened that was uh, not great, and yeah, it was. As I said, for me personally, it was a very, very tough time. But I also always felt like, hey, I can't let people down. I have to make sure that the movie um, um, gets finished and that the movie gets finished in the way that we promised um, the fans. I mean, fans pay for an old school film. Trusted me that, that we get this together so I could not let everybody down, um, which was very, very tough. But hey, we got it done. Pull and it believe off. me, I'm happy about it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm so sorry to uh, hear about your mom because I remember last year when we were um, doing, uh, going to do a live interview, which we did do, uh, we almost had to cancel that, you know, which was obviously 100% understandable. And uh, you were going through that. And yeah, uh, you know, anytime somebody sets out to do something and try and accomplish something big, life just has a way to throw massive obstacles in the mm. way, but that's what makes the accomplished so much more uh, accomplishment, so much more worthwhile in the end. Like, so even like for me, for example, uh, you know, I recently fought in Atlantic city and I barely made that fight. And I was I, like, I had that in my head, I'm going to do a fight, you know, and like some people are saying, Oh, you're too old. You shouldn't do it, do whatever, you know, but uh, it was in my head and it's something I wanted to do. And of course I had a, a really bad injury that I heard like in late November, I literally tore my bicep. So it's like, okay, I'm boxing, but I can only use one arm and train with one arm. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to train as much as I could with one arm, which is uh, not a good thing for boxing, but um, I pulled it off and I got the victory at the end of the day. But again, it's just an example of like, you want to go after something that's kind of um, a big goal. It's you're going to be thrown with some damn big challenges, man. But like you pulled it off, I pulled it off you know it could be done but it ain't easy it's a lot easier to quit yes. but you know you're never going to get anywhere in life if you just quit yes and and, that, and that's the thing you you got to keep you rocky you got to keep moving forward and <laughs> and um look because of the whole process i mean i spent two and a half years and i already said that uh a couple of times i, I really feel that i gave it all like 100 percent there's not a single day where I feel like, okay, I could have done more. So I'm 100% aware that not everybody's going to like the, uh, the movie because even the greatest movies of all time have a lot of doubters. So why would I believe that that my movie suddenly is the one that everybody likes? I'm 100% sure not everybody's going to like it. But, of course, I would feel sorry in terms of, hey, it's a shame that you don't like it. I wish um, you could, but we, we gave it all. Nobody can say anything to me that would make me feel um, bad because I n knew or know I did everything within my powers. I, I, wor I worked 20 hours a day for, al for almost one and a half years. I um, made all the sacrifices that you can ask from a human being. I did everything respectfully in terms of delivering the maximum to our abilities. Like uh, people... 
people will say, oh, this is not, not like Bloodsport. No, of course it's not like, not like Bloodsport because Bloodsport is the greatest or probably one of the two greatest martial arts movies of all time. And I don't want to even compare to that. That, that's, that movie is in the league of its own. What we did is a love letter and an homage to that movie. And even a movie like Bloodsport, if you, uh, if you translate the, the, um, the currency to nowadays worth, uh, even Bloodsport had a four-time budget of our movie. Mm. right so so we literally dealt with like no money whatsoever and we still pulled it off to have a film that you can actually watch that's being released that i'm still sure a lot of people still will like yeah with some great talent incredible music and uh, a lot of heart and a lot of uh, tears blood and sweat from people who really gave it all i mean i'm not the only one we all did Speaking of the release, what's the difference between the media book and the steel book? Because I see both versions, at least on Amazon Germany. I yes. only see one in the U.S. release so far. But what's the difference between the media book yes. and the steel book? Um, the media book, for whatever reason, seems to be a German thing. Um, we have a difference. And look, I'm, I'm no expert in that. I, I can just tell you what, what I've heard from distributors and, and stuff. Um, in Germany, you have a very, very big collector's fan base. And the media book is basically um, a very high-class book with um, two Blu-rays inside and also a booklet with like, I don't know, like 15 to 20 pages with pictures of the movie, the story written down, and uh, really, really beautiful. And yeah, that's for the German markets. People love that here. The Steelbook, also very high class, but a Steelbook, I think you guys also have that in the States, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that um, that also has its worth because it's very high quality. And, and when you touch the surface, the, the fists are coming out a little. So, uh, but it does not have the booklet. But that's what you get in, but that's what you have in the States. And both of them, Media Book and Steelbook, are limited editions. And once they are sold out, then you will have a normal Blu-ray. Oh, really? And I, can, I can tell you, for example, in Germany, we are um, we already sold a lot of them, so they're probably going to be sold out at some point. And thanks so much to the fans uh, for supporting. And this, I'm sorry that that I keep on rambling, but this is the only opportunity that I have to to say thanks to the fans. Um, thank you to all the people that not only said that they're going to support the movie, but who actually also bought it. And also thank you to the guys who purchased the Blu-ray on Kickstarter and still bought a uh, media book or who bought the media book and the Blu-ray. Um, guys, without you people, this movie never would have hit, uh, never would have been possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. A lot of people talk. Not everybody walks the, wa uh, uh, walks the walk. So thank you so much. Mm, exactly. I got to get that. The media book <laughs> i need to get the actual book in there so that's what i'm gonna order i bought You're five right. of them yesterday i bought I, i'm gonna hang them up everywhere man but that'd be cool to see them like behind you on that wall you know yeah um, okay so aside from the actual physical copy of the disc like what platform is will the last kumite stream on yes so um and this is not 100 guaranteed but this is this uh, the current state um today so uh, for the Ger German-speaking territories and the UK, uh, the movie will be available on Amazon Prime to purchase in the first week, and then you can rent the movie in the second week. And in the US, it looks like it will be uh, on Amazon Prime in the middle of May. Um, we are currently still talking to a, a big, um, a big uh, store chain that um, if they say yes and they buy a lot of our um, Blu-rays, that will mean that the online or the streaming service would have to wait another week. But this would be great for us because that would mean that they take a lot of um, a lot of Blu-rays. But yeah, it will be on Amazon Prime. Question is if it will be the middle of um, May or the end of May or early June in the States. Oh, as far as the big store chain... Would they, do you know if they would have like the steel book or would that all probably be so already on lot? Oh, they would have the steel book, not just the regular DVD. Yeah, the regular DVDs and steel book until the uh, steel, um, steel book are the, the limited, are, um, are, um, are gone, then only the steel, uh, only the, the uh, normal Blu rays. Okay, okay. Hey, we talked a lot about the obstacles. What, um, 
what surprised you the most not obstacle wise but like like a pleasant surprise like what what, what, what was like the nicest surprise uh being the of producer the first time producer working on the film um a couple of them number one that all the stars of the film so the big names they were all the greatest pleasure whatsoever um matthias who's kurt mckinney um billy blanks Mohammed kissy and 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 cynthia they were all so great it was such a pleasure to work with them of course you know that they are in the business for such a long time and there is a likelihood that they are cool but you only know for sure once you actually get to work with them and it was unbelievable um yeah matthias landwehr um the lead um who i'm good friends with now uh was incredible in terms of he committed so much to the movie that he gained like 12 pounds. I'm not sure if I translate the uh, the value correctly, but uh, eight kilos. I don't know how much that is in the U.S. In, in pounds, but a lot of muscle mass he gained for the movie. He trained like seven months like crazy to really bulk up. And uh, he was also so cool. Um, Mike Muller, who did the fight choreography, I think he really got that 80s vibe, which... Uh, I mean, fight, fighting in the 80s looked different than it does now nowadays in films. So he really caught that vibe and um, the fan support. I mean, there were so many, so many pleasant surprises. Many people on the crew who really gave it all, uh, working extra hours. Many, many good things. A couple of bad things, but mostly positive things. And and as I said, um, look, it all could have... It all could have uh, gone a lot worse in terms of of um, the actors and stuff. So I I heard some crazy stories. So I'm just grateful that we were able to pull it off, and that so many people actually really really gave it all. Oh, for sure, man! It was such a thrill. Uh, I know you got to run soon. You got you got interview after interview after interview, which is great. Really get the word out. So you know I. I, I just really, like I said, man, I got to congratulate you because that is a huge, a huge accomplishment, especially for like a first time producer, not only finishing the film, but it's good and it's got real commercial distribution. And I know the fans are going to love it. They're going to eat it up. They're going to have a good time. I mean, I, I hope so. And, and then yeah. one last question before you got to run. So what's what's next in store for you after doing all the promo work? Of course, it never ends. I mean, you got a taste of, of making a film. You made a film. You want to make more films. Is that the plan? Yes, I have two projects in the pipeline. Um, the next film that uh, that we're finishing the script now, we start a pre-production, is called Lion Fist, mm. which will be a mixture between Rocky, No Retreat, No Surrender, and Karate Kids. Okay. And also old school. So everything I do will be old school, okay? First things first. Sure. And the other film that um, we started writing the script or finishing the script also by the end of the month is called Berlin Ninja, uh, which will be and it, if you see the poster, you're gonna be you're gonna be excited, man. Mm -hmm. uh, which will be yeah, an old school slash new school ninja movie with a logical explanation why there why there is a ninja running around in 2024. So in, uh, in Berlin, of all places, that's funny. So is this kind yes. of your homage to American Ninja, maybe yes. in a way? Yes. Mm, but you got to keep it in your homeland, Berlin. <laughs> yeah, but but I'm actually very excited about that story, man. It's oh, okay. But hey, uh, unfortunately, I probably have to run a Kickstarter again. Which oh this oh this this is also one one thing I want well, I want to say. Um, hmm. this is uh. Because I know and I understand that from a Kickstarter perspective, um, you don't think about that because why would you? Um, because the movie was supported by 1,000 uh, Kickstarters and Indiegogo uh, supporters. Now, obviously, everybody every once in a while sends me a message and wants feedback. Um, if you have 1,000 people who sent you a message or two messages, you can do the math. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So... Uh, I spend a lot of time replying to people and it, it was uh, the Kickstarter campaign, the after work and stuff was so much work. It was unbelievable. So if I had the choice, I would avoid doing that again because um, of course, if somebody supports you, you want to show them love back and you want to reply and everything uh, really from the bottom of my heart because, Hey, you support me. I want to, uh, I want to give something back. 
but it was just so much work. And if I had the choice, I would not do this again because I always felt like I can do this justice. But I haven't met a millionaire yet who gave me $1 million and said, hey, go for it. Uh, so, Well, yeah. you know, with the uh, – I'm pretty sure with the reception, we'll, we'll know once it's officially out, but I'm pretty sure – going to be a very positive reception going to be successful i don't think you're going to have trouble raising money for the next films because you're going to have this one in your belt people are going to see it you're going to see it. it's and like you said it's already selling really really nice and it's only been available for like a day on pre-order so i do not think you're going to have trouble getting funding for for the next film because you, you, we'll you got a track that. record you're going to have a track record now we'll see about that i hope so thanks to the listeners thank you everybody and yeah please support the last committee Let's make retro martial arts again. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Sean.